there's a better looking convertible car on sale right now than the one you see here, then you'd be hard pushed to name it. But then the new GTC Roadster from AMG is not just a pretty face. Beneath its knee-tremblingly gorgeous bodywork, it's also a phenomenally quick, highly engaging car to drive, with, as we'll discover, a huge dose of quality and refinement to go with it. So while it's undeniably expensive at 139 odd grand, the GTC Roadster is arguably one of the best value high-end convertibles money can buy at the moment. Because dynamically, it all but matches far more expensive rivals from the likes of Ferrari, Lamborghini and McLaren, while costing broadly the same money as a Porsche 911 Turbo convertible. The GTC Roadster is powered by AMG's ubiquitous 4.0-litre twin-turbo V8, and in this case it produces a thumping 680 newton metres of torque. And that's enough to fire the 1735 kilogram Roadster to 62 miles an hour in just 3.7 seconds, and onto a top speed of 196 miles an hour, which is pretty amazing given that the Roadster is rear, not four-wheel drive. At the back, it gets electronic four-wheel steering and a fully electric limited slip diff, which helps explain why it has so much traction. And at the front, it features the same distinctive Panamericana grille that was first seen on the AMG GTR. Auto Express went out to Arizona last week to drive the GTC on all sorts of roads and in all sorts of weather. But before we took to the great roads in the mountains to drive it, we drove it along the freeway for a while, just to see how refined it is on the move. So this is exactly 70 miles an hour down the freeway. So, you know, a realistic UK motorway speed. And I have to say, the refinement in the cabin is exceptional. There is almost, almost no wind buffeting going on on my head at all. My hair is not being ruffled in any way. Admittedly, there is not a lot of hair to be ruffled, but honestly, it's just, it's just amazing what these manufacturers, the tricks that they come up with to make stuff like this as refined and just as comfortable, as well as being crazily aggressive sports cars. I mean, this is a really luxuriant, okay, this, the seats are pretty sporting and the overall look is sporting, but the, but the sensations in comfort on the electronic dampers, just bumbling along this freeway at exactly 70 miles an hour, it's just amazing. It feels like a, a limousine that just actually doesn't happen to have a roof. But there are some other things that we need to go and do with the AMG Roadster. And they don't involve a motorway, but they do involve some mountain roads up here. So I think we need to go there absolutely immediately and have a proper play with the AMG GTC Roadster. So that's what the AMG Roadster is like to drive along a motorway. But what's it like on more challenging roads? Like the one that leads up into the hills of Arizona to the famous old deserted mining town at Jerome, which they say is chock full of haunted houses. This is called the Road to Jerome, and Jerome is a pretty spooky, freaky place. It's this old mining town, absolutely in the middle of nowhere in Arizona, over 5,000 feet up, and it's totally deserted. There's all these signs up saying Jesus lives and dreams come true, but no, no one wants to live here, which is just utterly, utterly freaky. But the road to Jerome itself is winding, quite empty and rather brilliant. Pretty much the perfect place to stick the AMG into race mode and let rip in it for a bit. It's a bit of an animal when you do as well, this thing. The C version, which this one is, has got a sports exhaust and it's got all the electronic suspension that we talked about in the beginning. <laughs> it's also got the race mode. It's got every single toy that you can throw as an AMG GT. 
as standard for your money. I have to say, it is a bit of a weapon on a road like this. It sounds absolutely amazing. God, it downshifts for you. Mercedes have got these gearboxes ever so slightly wrong for absolutely ages, but this one works a treat in race mode. It detects that you're braking on the way into a corner. I haven't, I haven't downshifted then. It's doing that all on its own because it knows I'm trying to stop for a corner. That's amazing and brilliant. Considering I've got this dialed up to race and everything is in its stiffest setting, most aggressive, throttle engine, gearbox, steering, the lot, it still actually feels quite soft. Not in a bad way though, just in a really nice, controlled, still fundamentally quite comfortable way, but still with absolutely brilliant chassis control. God, it stops well, this thing. It really does. There's just masses of feel through the brake pedal and huge stopping power as well. I love the steering. I, I, I love most things about this car on the move, actually. The way it sounds, the way it steers, the way it stops, definitely the way it goes. in they say 3.7 seconds it feels like 0 to 100 in some of the 7 and 8 and 196 miles an hour flat out and all of which is delivered from this really lovely cabin with this fabulous soundtrack following you all the way down the road God. I mean I know it's a lot of money 139 odd grand but it just feels like so much car for that sort of money. It's really composed, it's really comfortable, it sounds delicious. It looks the nuts, I think. Honestly, in the flesh, this thing just looks amazing. I mean, you expect it to be good, but I'm not quite sure I was expecting it to be this brilliant, this friendly, this quick, this leery. Oh, does everything. Once again, what I can't understand is why you'd ever want the coupe version of this car when you just put the roof up and it feels like a coupe three layered fabric that this is and the refinement but it feels like a coupe what a car what a vehicle click on the video windows to watch a first drive of the original AMG GT or watch a drag race between the AMG GTS and an Audi R8 click on the play icon to watch our latest video or on our logo to subscribe.